What's going on guys and welcome to the video. In this one I'm going to show you how to scan for stocks set up similarly to this one here just before it had a strong bull push. This is the stock SALM and I found this on Finviz. It had a over 9% gain uh, on Friday. Uh, so it's a pretty interesting stock to take a look at. Uh, at the end of this video as well, I'd like to discuss potential ways of how to actually trade this setup. Uh, please bear in mind that this is not intended to be financial advice, it is uh, for educational purposes only, but still very interesting nonetheless. So I've applied a couple uh, technical indicators to this and I want to show you how I would set up this particular scan. Uh, so first I always like to start with some sort of moving average. In this case I have the 50 moving average, uh, simple moving average. Um, I also have a momentum indicator here simply called momentum and it's fairly simple if it's uh, above then we have a positive upward momentum if it's below it attempts to find a, a lower momentum if you're right along riding the line uh, tends to be in a range so let's try to use these to build the scan to identify similar stocks if we go over to scan we're gonna click add filter and we'll do for study and we're going to go ahead and want to edit this. Go ahead and click delete and add condition. And we're going to want the price. Let's start with the open. Um, if you noticed, before I even start this, if you notice right here, uh, this is where we're going to scan for. This is what we're going to want to look at. So how do we find this particularly? Uh, well, if you notice, the open here is below this 50 moving average and the close is actually above it. So we can easily scan for that. Go ahead into the scan and uh, we'll continue editing this. So again, delete that, uh, add condition for the price. The open is actually going to be less than or equal to. We can do that. And uh, we'll select the study, type in simple. It's going to be less than or equal to the simple moving average 50, which is what we have on our chart, within one bar or one day. Go ahead, click save. And we can add another condition. Again, for the price, this time the close. And if you recall, this is greater than and the study is the simple moving average and length is 50 and again within one bar or one day go ahead and click save and click OK so now this by itself is already searching for this exact setup where the uh, open is below the 50 SMA and the close is above the 50 SMA pretty simple pretty easy to set up now I also as I mentioned have the momentum indicator here and if we take a look at this particular point in time you can come right down here look at what is the blue uh, right here at this point in time and you see it's 0 0.5 if I were to go a little bit earlier down where it's in the negative you can see that it's over right down here at negative 0.31 and here it's 0.5 so we can build that into our scan go to scan click add filter for study and uh, with the new one that's popped up, go ahead, click the edit button. We'll bring that down here. It's right straight forward. Click add condition for study. And we're going to type in momentum. And we're going to have to scroll down before we find just momentum by itself. And we want the value to be greater than the value and zero. So now it's greater than zero. You could make it a little more specific and have it greater than or equal to. 0.5 which is what we have on our chart uh, but just to make things simple I'll keep it is greater than zero suggesting that upwards positive momentum and again within one bar or one day go ahead and click save and click OK now there's a few things you want to do in addition to these uh, often when you scan for something this general you're gonna pull up a lot of garbage stocks so you want to try and filter for those stocks and the way I like to do that is I'll add filter for stock and I will want the close to be at minimum of one dollar not ten dollars one dollar this helps filter out some of those penny stocks that um, are more risky to especially on a swing trade to take and you can of course adjust this as well go up to maybe two dollars or whatnot if you notice on our chart at this particular point in time this stock was around the two dollar fifty mark so uh, you want to bear that in mind if you're looking for similar stocks now you want to take that into consideration so in this point we'll just take a minimum of one dollar we're going to add another filter for stock as well uh, because if we take a look here you'll notice that the percent change between the close of this bar the open of this bar 
um, is actually uh, over 9%. So we do want to factor that into our consideration as well. We want this to be showing a positive movement, a positive trend. So let's just simply build that into the scanner, uh, adding that filter for stock, going down to percent change, and having it a minimum of 5%. And again, you know, you can change this how you want, uh, uh, factor in what you want, but I think a 5% change is a good place to start. If you go ahead and click scan for that, it's going to pull up different uh, stocks that will potentially fit that bill. And uh, you can filter it by any way you want, percent change or by volume. I typically like to filter by volume, get a sense of how much liquidity is there. Um, if I were to trade this, if someone was to trade this. Um, and I did take a look at this stock already, P-E-N-N. This comes up in this particular scan. Uh, it's actually looking like a pretty nice setup. There was a good initial push up, a bit of a pullback and now a consolidation at a previous consolidation zone uh, and we're starting to trend back above the 50-day moving average with a pretty strong green bullish bar uh, just on Friday. And again if you look down here uh, where is our momentum? It is at 2.14 uh, down here in the corner on the blue uh, as I hover over this bar 2.14 so it's in the positive there's a positive momentum interestingly as well we can see some volume increasing here uh, on, as well so um, more shares being transferred at this point in time uh, interesting type of looking setup so how would you potentially trade this um, I, I do think giving some advice on that uh, would be educational so uh, let's go back to our initial stock and uh, try to piece together how we might trade this um, in order to better visualize that uh, what I think I'm gonna do is uh, just eliminate these studies uh, so um, the easiest way for me to do that is I have a price action uh, built in pre uh, pre-built set so that's gonna be the easiest now um, here is our entry bar uh, as, uh, as we had looked into this scan for and uh, typically when you see a strong bar like this you want to put an entry just one tick above uh, and you'll see that on the next day you would have been triggered for that. Now you want to put your stop loss below the entry bar. So that would be one tick below this bar. And if you notice, as we move forward here, this came dangerously close to triggering that, but the bulls had said, absolutely no way are you going to push below this to push this back into a downtrend. Uh, this uptrend was was essentially verified by this the failure of this bearish bar to gain more bearish. This became a bear trap for those weak bears as the bulls came in. I hope you understand what I mean by that. Essentially, if you had a stop loss right below this entry bar, you would be fine. You would be protected and you would still be in this trade. Uh, that's why you don't want to freak out if in the initial, you know, this was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days where you were just sitting there uh, potentially holding, uh, you know, five, seven percent loss just waiting for this to turn around. And you initially had felt about a nine percent increase. So you can imagine the emotions there where you were going up, you made the profits about eight percent, and then you're just watching as this thing crumbles, you know, expecting to potentially lose out on this trade. And uh, once those final uh, people sold out right here it was of course where it was able to take off so bear that in mind you know this price action really means a lot so this would be your stop loss and then essentially from there you can uh, put in stop losses at major points uh, as you move forward um, so it's kind of up to your discretion what those points might be but just looking at this chart um, I would think here's another main point uh, where the buyers came in. You can have a stop loss here. Um, you could potentially adjust your stop loss to this or this green bar uh, after we have this bearish uh, fail. Um, you have a nice little triangle sorted right here. So here's another uh, bull buy bar, another signal bar uh, that you can use to increase your stop loss You know, from here to here and kind of work your way up as you go. You do want to be a little bit careful with this if there's some consolidation like here. Uh, this is too tight of a stop loss as you can see here you would have been triggered uh, because this is a consolidation zone you want to be careful with that and recognize that this was the initial signal bar or this one uh, not this one. Continuing as it moves up, uh, and right now you could consider either of these two, I think, uh, as your potential stop losses, uh, you know, below this bar or below this bar. You know, this, of course, being more more aggressive, this being more conservative, 
And then obviously, as you've noted by this massive sell-off, you know, people who have been holding for a long time, they see this massive spike in price far above the, what it was previously, you know, recognizing this as a sell zone. So there are obviously people taking profits, um, just not wanting to wait any longer, not needing to wait any longer, getting a very nice return uh, on those potential uh, gains there. So I'm going to clear that drawing set, and then let's move over to pen, uh, because just to talk about that briefly, how would you trade this? And it would be the same exact similar idea. So if you recall on our on the previous chart, um, I was talking about the price action of putting in an order just above the tick of this bar, and then a sell order just below the tick of this bar. So this is not confirm anything, right? The fact that this came up in the scan, the fact that it's on an uptrend, that it's trending above our indicators that we looked at, that it looks like it's in a consolidation zone potentially moving back around really doesn't mean anything looks can be deceiving this is why you have to practice good uh, trade management placing your stop losses understanding price action so vital so that that is how you would do it you would put an entry order one tick above with a stop loss one tick below and uh, you would wait and see you could be more conservative uh, or, or aggressive as well, put a stop loss below the low of this bar or even below the low of this bar um, where this is trending around. Really depends on how you want to do it uh, for this particular uh, setup. Um, that is how I would do it, one tick above, one tick below, and then you would wait and see. No guarantees as with any trading strategy, um, but uh, interesting nonetheless. And again, this is not intended to be financial advice this is intended to be educational how would you go through create a scan based on a stock that you saw based on a particular pattern how would you go ahead and trade that how would you be able to apply it to other stocks and implement that trading strategy so i hope you guys found this useful if you did let me know in the comments below if you have any thoughts suggestions for future videos i'm always on the lookout for what you guys want to see more of um, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already I greatly appreciate that, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for sticking around.